are all doing great. How are things going on? Guys, I'm audible. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, yeah. yes, you are. How are you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, uh, let's recap uh, that uh, uh, earlier session. Uh, in a couple of minutes, we'll close it and I will jump into the another uh, topic which is going to be excited for today. Uh, yeah, uh, as discussed on uh, last uh, in the last class, that what is the cloud? Why the cloud is needed? And what is the flavors of the cloud? And how the functionality will work in the cloud? We discussed in the first class, okay? As discussed, as informed, if we want to have the any kind of <clears throat> implementation of the software, we need we need hardware, hardware and networking, networking and software engineer and Maintenance. Maintenance. These are all required to cloud. If it doesn't need any kind of hardware, uh, hardware configuration, hardware configuration not required. The configuration is not required, and uh, network configuration is not required. Network engineer also not required. Network AC is not required. And coming to that, maintenance. That is not our headache. That would be taken care by service provider, who is called, like in the market, we are having three cloud platforms, right? Azure, Microsoft by Microsoft, and AWS by Amazon, GCP by Google. Their headache of the maintenance. And uh, we observe. We, we discussed in the last class about uh, how uh, <coughs> how the data will be stored in the cloud environment. As informed you earlier, that it will perform, it will it will follow three replication factor, which is like in the back end also it will follow the Hadoop architecture. As informed you earlier, the, if you are uh, if you are loading any kind of five MB or else of any kind of uh, one file into the uh, cloud storage, it will take it will it will in the back end it will be stored as a three replications, which is in one CPU it will be stored at one point and later on it will be moved and it will follow the replication factor as a three. And every uh, cloud uh, environment, and if you see the white papers which was released by the Amazon or else Microsoft or else the GCP, where this uh, uh, where this about the structure, what is the algorithms they are following in the backend is all about to the Hadoop. Hadoop architecture will be the, uh, followed by the all the service providers, all the cloud service providers. Okay, and uh, coming to that. Why exactly Hadoop is needed here? That is a question next. Why, what exactly the challenges? What is the benefits we are going with the Hadoop architecture? Hadoop architecture is a compatible hardware. Means like it is commodity hardware, can be used in the backend. Means it is an open source software. Like commodity hardware is nothing but it is kind of a cheap hardware. Not cheap means not much cheaper. Like Cheap in the sense it is in the in the in the perspective of in the perspective of hardware. It will use commodity hardware and uh, why commodity hardware is using? You might get a question. We are having the our sensitive data. We are storing it in our cloud and we are using if the commodity hardware is nothing but a cheap hardware. Where is case of all the uh, in I can say you uh, like if you are having uh, uh, HP storage, it will be cast type comparing to the Sonata. The Sonata will be it will be a commodity hardware. Why this uh, all the backend architecture 
is using the commodity hardware that would be an equation we are using we are storing our interesting and uh, our confidential data into the cloud storage if we lose there might be chances there might be crashes with the cheap data that might be an equation arise in your mind right so one coming to the pardon can uh, go on mute anyone i think raj Oh, perfect, perfect. Okay, so why the commodity hardware will give the specific uh, uh, boost up our to our cloud architecture means it will follow the three replication factor in the back end. If you are storing one file, one file here, and it will follow the replication in another node. It will follow another replication, in another factor. Okay. In the back end, if you are uploading any kind of a 5 MB file or 10 MB file, or whatever the size it is, it will follow the three replication factor in the cluster level, in the racks, and in the nodes, it will follow the three replication factor. Then once the this this uh, this file was gone down, for example, let's say it got it got deleted or else it is unresponsive. Let's say immediately my resource manager in the Hadoop architecture, it will speak with secondary node, the second, second node. What is the status of your, it will call, it will be called as heartbeat mechanism. Every three seconds or every five seconds, it will be uh, based on the configuration in the cluster level for every three seconds and every five, five seconds, it will, it will create a log whether this node one is active or not as node two is active or not, node three is active or not. If the node one is down, immediately it will reach to the node two and it will speak, hey, node two, give me my data. Is this existing with you or not? It will check in from the node two. If the node two also down in a bad and worse scenario, it will come into here, in node three. In the scenario here also we lost the data, then how can we get the backup? The reason wandering, right? So here is the concept called redundancy. Redundancy in the Azure, in the cluster level. Redundancy is nothing but, for example, here we are having, here, for example, let's let's assume that here, this is in the all over the world, we are having Asia region, okay? region and east us region region europe region europe region and australia region region and chinese region chinese also comes under asia right which is not required so in these in these regions in these regions according to the requirement According to the number of users who are using their service, the service providers will create the clusters in that particular region and they start giving the access to the users from that uh, particular uh, region. For example, let's say US is, uh, is in a big country, right? There is a many users, many number of users in the US. We are having East US, East US, East Best use, best use region cluster. So, and South Central US. In this South Central US cluster. These are all the cluster varieties. For example, let's say I was opted. There is a three kind of redundancies uh, the Azure will follow. Let me give you a clarity. Okay. There is a three uh, redundancies. One is Well, 
remember redundancy okay and uh, geo redundancy geo zonal zonal redundancy and geo redundancy okay local redundancy is nothing but here as we discussed here this is one cluster okay in for let's say this is for this is existing in the southeast asia okay this is existing in the so asia region okay asia region For time being, let's assume that this is yes. Okay. For example, here we are having. as a inform local redundancy and uh, zonal redundancy redundancy and geo redundancy okay if you are opted for this asia region if my three uh, this one was gone okay three uh, data nodes was gone then you are unable to get your data when you are opting for the local redundancy and local redundancy is nothing but you are only the people who are residing in the asia region okay they can access the data who are uh, having the access permissions to that okay coming to the east us data east us if you are having the zonal okay in that for example as i inform you here Here, uh, East US, West US, and uh, South uh, Central US, right? It will you have to opt the zonal level. What is the zone is required, and uh, uh, availability of, for example, here you are having the three replication factor in the Asia region. If your Asia region was down, you can get the backup from the East US. That is called another backup uh, for your data. Another three replication factor will be. followed in the back end from the east us region we are coming to the geo redundancy all over the clusters who where it is existing and where it is residing all uh, all uh, all clusters will hold your data and you can oh, if one cluster is down immediately you can get from other cluster that is called geo redundancy this is called this is the features of the cloud service providers Okay. So these are all the differences between local, zonal, and geo redundancy. And most of the companies, most of the Fortune five hundred companies, will use will go for zonal redundancy. Why they can't go for the uh, geo redundancy means it is a cost effective on the basis of your usage. in that clusters and cloud they will charge that is the income for the uh, service providers this is the motto and what uh, in the back end okay we are done with that right as as we discussed here in the here what exactly the architecture it will look like how you are you, you the uh the service providers like microsoft and uh, amazon and uh, google are they are landing their uh, clusters and uh, we are unable to how we have how, how we have to interact with them that is the next question to us right so usually if any of the uh, uh service provider they will give one url 
and one link to the users to use the their services for example if we are if you if we consider that for azure we are having portal.azure.com portal.azure.com for aws there is aws dot in i hope in gcp there is another site like that they will give the one user interface link to the to their users and that the, with that they can able to access they can able to access the their services This is the or right. so this is the uh, main uh, UI of the uh, Microsoft Azure. Here we can create the resources and virtual machines. I have to log out for this. This is my office one more. Okay. So these are all the resources are existing in the Azure. By searching here, we can get all the resources. Storage account. If you go, you can create one resource and you can get that one. That exactly what is needed. So, uh, with that URL, a uh, UI, we can access the uh, services by using the interface internet internet is the medium between uh, you and the cloud service provider it might be an azure it might be an aws it might be a gcp google cloud platform okay in that once you was entered as i was shown to you over there you have to Have to opt what exactly the resources are needed. With that, let me sign in into this. Allow me a second, guys. Bear with me. Having the password is not coming. So once you was entered into your, uh, once you was logged in into your uh, cloud service provider, for example, let's stamping, let's let's consider that Azure. Once you was logged in, you have to create your subscription 
and once you was created your subscription under that you have to create your resource group resource group is nothing but like we are having the folders right in our laptop c drive d drive will hold the folder in that we will we will create one folder as a resource group inside that we will uh, attach what exactly our requirement is needed for example we need our one sql database this will go over there will type and search as i was searched for the azure storage account right as as similar to that we will search for the sql server then it will give you the sql servers list which version of uh, sql server is required over there then you have to opt and you can install that and uh, you can uh, while you are configuring the sql server it will show for the payment and the usage and uh, what what is the amount is going to be charged for this particular usage particular resource okay according to that we will opt and configure as per our requirement okay which compare to that which compare to your local demonstration which which is called which you was called here in this which is very very lesser than our own configuration this you are creating you are using and destroying that is the main feature of any cloud platform okay once we are done with that then you are start implementing your logic and your project build as per according to the work requirement later on if you want any kind of the security and the management as i earlier said that is not your headache that would be taken care by the cloud plat partners like azure uh, microsoft and uh, amazon and gcp that is not your headache maintenance management and security that is not your headache they will be taken care but internally for example let's say you in your organization you are having 100 members 100 people in your organization right so each and every person wanted to access your data then how you are going to provide the security to your data means in that in your project also there is project manager will be there in on top of project manager another uh, technical project manager will be there another pta will be there and uh, uh, business partners will be there and later on under your project manager your technical lead will come and under the technical lead you uh, you will be the employee right under your technical advisor you will be an uh, employee too, right so they will manage they will manage user to user role based role based assignments role based permissions they will give so for example i am having one storage account storage account is nothing but one space we are uh, opting one space for particular folder okay folder or name just we are creating one folder later on we are in dumping the data into the storage account it is kind of an hard disk so we are just buying the storage okay in that in that in in that they will give you the uh, role based assignments to access the particular file if you are not to be not in you uh, if you are not having an access to that particular storage account you can't able to access the data which is existing inside that that is called security inside the internal application security that is called okay coming to the management management is nothing but you are having you are you are doing your work each and every day okay and your colleagues will do their work and your technical lead will do another work your technical advisor will do another work right to collaborate way to collaborate way to collect all the works of the employee and uh, reporting it to the product project manager and delivering it to the our uh, uh, clients that is called management inside that okay that is an internal management and security by using the git repository and uh, cicd there is called concept called azure devops using that they will collect all the data but with the artifacts they will collect all the data they will dump into the management and they will deliver it to the clients okay this is the entire cloud infrastructure cloud architecture in the from the back end how it will work 
okay coming to that flavors flavors of the cloud one, one is in microsoft azure and then amazon aws as i said gcp google cloud platform okay what is the differences we are having that is a big question to us right okay So these are all the functional and behavioral differences between AWS, Azure, and GCP. Okay. App testing. App testing, it uses the de uh, device form, AWS. It uses the dev test labels. Okay. This is not required just for your general uh, awareness, general uh, to have the general glance on the uh, different cloud platforms I am explaining you, but in the real time environment, this is this is theoretical knowledge is completely dumb. That is not required. Whatever you are having in hands on, whatever you will implement your pipeline, how you are building the pipelines, that is a plays a key role in the interview and in your work. This is the general uh, uh, general sake a sake of knowledge. That's it. that is I can say. Okay, that API management can be done, Amazon API Gateway and Azure API Gateway and uh, uh, Cloud Endpoint. This is GCP4. Okay, and uh, coming to this one, this one, uh, Kubernetes uh, management. Okay, that is a case. This is all called backend functional activities. Okay, for example, if you are see, uh, if you write any kind of a Java program, Okay, it will in the back end it will be converted as bytes, right? So in the this is the all the behavior from the back end. Okay, and uh, Git repositories, AWS this one, Amazon source repositories. Like we are having the two flavors here. Coming to the Git, one is a Git repository, and another one is a DevOps from Amazon. Uh, uh, this Azure. Okay, data warehouse. A redshift it will be used it will use sql uh, warehouse okay object storage s3 object storage is nothing but the storage account as i said it will use rational uh, relational dbs which will be in the back end of the storage account it will be used this one block box blobs and files that is nothing but this is nothing but azure Data lake, I can see. Data lake, I can see. Okay. And uh, this is called a Google Cloud Storage Account. That is. What is Azure Source Repositories? Pardon? Azure Source Repositories. Like, as you said earlier, we are having 10 members in our team, right? Mm -hmm. okay. To collect all the data. Okay. To collect all the employees' data by using Azure. DevOps and Git repository. They will collect by using the CI CD pipeline by implementing CI CD pipeline. For example, if you did some modification to one of the uh, a broad environment issue, usually we will have <clears throat> multiple environments in our uh, in ADF or else any resource, right? So if you did any kind of an, uh, there is a uh, chance of getting a mistake or there is a kind of an, uh, uh, in the prod, it is a highly secured one, right? So for to get the backup, to get the resource, uh, restore the data to the previous version, they will use Azure DevOps. And CACD uh, is a flow uh, by using the artifacts. They will pick and they, it will be used. Yeah, I mean, like uh, when you are comparing Git repositories with uh, AWS and Azure, Azure has its own Azure repos, right? Yes, as yes. a service. Yes, Azure repo is Azure DevOps is the own uh, service, but it okay. will support for Git repo as well. Yeah, it supports. Yeah, it clarified, right? Yes. Yeah, coming to the relational, these are all the backend things the which are not required for your interview purpose and which is not required for. You will not get to know uh, 
each and every aspect in your real time environment as well. But in the back end, in the cluster level, how it is functioning? That is the point. This is an object storage. Object storage is S3 bucket. And this is the S3 bucket is nothing but it is just a collection collection. It will support for the Oracle and it will support for the SQL, whatever it is. Just you can collect the data into the Amazon S3. And uh, by using the uh, any uh, cloud service provider to service. For example, uh, I would like to give you one example here that I'm, I'm holding my data in Amazon S3 bucket. I would like to use it from Azure uh, uh, Data Factory. That would be possible. There is kind of an, uh, uh, we can uh, create one bridge for the uh, one cloud partner to other, another cloud partner. Later on, we can perform the flow of transformations. Okay. And uh, coming to this blocks storage is an EBS and a page blobs and uh, personal disks. Okay. I will share it with you guys. Uh, kindly go through each and everything. Uh, I will explain you on that part if you find any difficulty. So main thing, what exactly the roles and responsibilities of an Azure data engineer or Azure data factory engineer, Azure Synapse Analytics engineer. First point, when you are entering the organization, you should have the grants and must and should migration part from on-premise to the cloud or cloud to cloud or within the cloud, within one cloud. You should have the knowledge on the migration part. Migration is the major role will play in cloud uh, environment. Why I'm specifying the migration is the, you, the main uh, backbone of usage of the cloud is migration uh, is uh, to avoid the uh, creation of the our uh, uh, on-premise servers and on-premise environments. On-premise is nothing but local. Despite of that, instantly we are purchasing from the cloud, we are using it. So previously, before to the COVID, most of the projects are existing in the on-premise machines. So once the COVID was gone, it was gone like uh, it was difficult to maintain the uh, servers and difficult to uh, access the data if you any if difficult to management manage the servers is getting into the more risk to avoid the, all the glitches most of the fortune 500 companies are using our azure as a cloud service and they are migrate there are so many projects where in in the year of 2018 to 2020 i can say okay Migration is nothing but just uh, like uh, lift and shift, I can say. Lifting the data from the our uh, uh, local existing data to the cloud environment. That is a major role. And uh, coming to the pipeline buildings and maintenance. According to the logic, for example, according to the logic, you have to, you, you, you have to able to build your pipeline with using the different activities and different transformations and uh, different schedulers, schedulers, according to that, you have to run your pipelines and transforming the data. Main concept of the Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics is kind of ATL and ELT operations we can do. ATL and ELT is nothing but extract, transform, and load, extract, load, and transform, ELT, extract, load, and transform. Okay, ETL is nothing but extracting the data from on-premise and transforming the data and loading into our cloud environment. Okay, main difference between ELT is nothing but extracting the data first up, pulling the data from the uh, on-premise servers and loading it our, into our cloud environment. Later on, as per our requirement, you have to transform by using your ETL tool called ADF and Synapse. Synapse. Okay, there is one difference between by using the ADF and Synapse. One resource, pro, one uh, one cloud service can't provide two ETLs. This is an analytical tool. Analytical tool. Okay, we'll we'll discuss on this. Uh, it is in a very big topic mm, about to the differences between the ADF and Synapse. We'll discuss on that. Okay. So you should have the glance on this one. Main uh, roles and responsibilities should be how your ETL and ELD knowledge on that. 
okay uh, transforming data uh, transforming data by using the data flows and by using the pipeline activities as per your requirement you have to do that and by using the analyzed data analyzed data is nothing but we will not deal in the real time with one or two or max to 10 no max to 10 no i can say we will deal with dbs of data dbs of data and sometimes it may lead to one pipeline with the high configuration it might take around 5 hours 5 hours to load to load from on premise to the cloud environment i can surely say so you are capable to take the challenges on on according to the need why i am saying that analyze the data means without having the glands on that particular on premise data for example i am having the uh, on prem sql server on prem sql server okay on prem sql server means since from my client since from 2000 my client is using using on prem sql server okay i he is having around 20 tb of data of data okay so directly dumping the 20 tb of data into the cloud which will cost around which will cost huge billing okay so there might be there might be chances there is a chances not might there is a chances we can reduce our data into the 15 db or 10 db there might be a duplicates so removing the duplicates and analyzing the data and uh, uh, removing the duplicates and uh, 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 like uh, shortening and encrypting the data and only opting the required fields opting the required fields this kind of transformations we have to do to do to do that we have to firstly analyzing capability and we should have the analyzing capability of the data what is the format we are getting from the source and what exactly it is existing in our sync side mm -hmm. our sync is nothing but a destination i can say here in the azure terminology we'll use it as a sync okay and uh, Yeah, uh, maintaining the deployments. When coming to that, uh, this, for example, uh, for our uh, 10 TB or 20 TB of the data, our timeline is five months. Oh, no, not five months. Five months is more enough. Two months. Let's, let's consider to migrate from on premise to the cloud to perform the migration. Okay. Maintaining the deployments. There is, if I do the entire 20 TB of data, TB of data, my all pipelines will go on. Day. All pipelines will be in stack. Why? It is a huge amount of data and there might be in chances of the duplicates and uh, there is kind of an throughput. Throughput is nothing but uh, speed of transmission, speed of transmission might be cause the issue. There might be an n number of statuses. So initially, what I'll do is from the 2000 to 2005, I'll segregate the data. Segregate the data. I will load it into my cloud environment. Initial load. Okay. Later on, 2002 to 2005 to I will take 20. Then, okay, that is called incremental, incremental data. Until that, until I will finish, until I will finish my data, I will load, I will load into my, load into my destination, destination sync, okay. Or uh, once it was done, so it will take around two months of data, right? Two months of time. In these two months also, the data will be generated and which will store the which will store it in on-prem sequence. 
that also that that also important to me right to run that one i will use finally once i am done with that i will use dry run dry run once uh, i was fixed that uh, uh, in the, in every organization i hope you was uh, observed the maintenance time in the maintenance time will perform the dry run and later on completely will do the all deployment into the cloud environment okay building logic according to your scenario for example let's say uh, in this scenario in this scenario you are having around let's assume that we are having per pipeline per pipeline around 30 transformations transformations which will lead <clears throat> multiple which, which which is needed multiple uh, kind of uh, changes in the data why we are using this transformation series the major aspect the major point why we have to use the transformation series to reduce the cost and to reduce the uh, to re reduce the balance in the sync side and to improve the performance of the throughput and improve the application usage for example uh, we are having uh, any kind of uh, like uh, 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 reporting tool let's say for ba tool let's say power bi tool is there existing okay uh, for that team uh, the, our data is existing in different cloud platforms and different uh, on premise uh, multiple resources okay we the major role the major role here come to collect the data from the other uh, uh, resources and we have to perform some kind of transformations over there. So we can't perform the transformations in the Power BI. Okay. I hope you got, you didn't got this point. Building a logic according to our scenario. What is needed is needed for 2016 to 2016 and 2023 okay let's assume okay we are having 2016 data in on premise 2016 data in on premise 2023 data in cloud. First, I have to, I have to, first I have to load this on-prem, on-prem data into, into cloud where my 2023 data is existing. Data is, data is existing, okay? Once I was done with that, once I'm done with my, uh, at, at one point I'm having the data, then my 2020, 2016 data is holding, is holding 150 columns. Okay. 2023 data is holding around 280 columns. From which I just need, for let's say, 40 columns in both where the match is existing with the serial number or else customer ID or else any kind of trans ID. Trans ID. Okay. So this is the logical building. This is called a logical building according to the scenario. Okay. And the structuring the pipelines using different activities in the uh, data factory. I will explain you clearly in when we are building the pipelines on this coding as per your project need. For example, if you are uh, working on if you are working on a SQL server, you should have the just familiar with your SQL uh, queries, simple queries. Okay, and uh, 
if you if it is for other kind of a python project or kind of any kind of project you should have a little glance on that that is enough more enough for that but to learn the azure data factory azure data factory factory as per my insights no coding is required coding is required just having the sample glance on the azure uh, sql sql queries like select transformation select queries and uh, uh, store procedures store procedures store procedures are more enough more enough to learn that one okay these are all the responsibilities and these are all the real time scenarios which you are going to uh, face once you are stepped into that into organization okay uh, from tomorrow we'll start uh, logging into our uh, uh, azure portal and we'll create one uh, new subscription into that and uh, inside that we'll create the uh, resources and uh, we'll step for the you know, step by step this is all this is all the theoretical part uh, before we are uh, stepping into the uh, cloud environment okay we'll next jump into our practical examples we'll play with data and we'll play with azure into the in the real environment and uh, i would like to get into your notice guys my style of saying mostly i will tell in this way and later on i will jump into i will just give you the overview of the scenario for example we are having one storage account how we have to create and what exactly is needed to that i will explain what uh, how the data is stored in the backend i will tell you here and later on i will jump into directly into the real time scenarios i believe if you are having a more hands on on your practice then uh, your mind also will uh, addict to habituate it will automatically habituate to that particular content i believe in that so my style of saying is this one if you are having any questions guys feel free to you can ask sandeep over to you Sandeep, I'm audible. Yes, Prashant. Yeah. Uh, this is about today. Uh, if you are have any doubts, you can uh, ask me.